The Frood number, far, is like the speed limit sign for water flow, showing us if a river is leisurely flowing or rushing like a roller coaster. It compares how fast the water is moving, inertial forces, to how much gravity is pulling it down, gravitational forces. Imagine a lazy river ride where you can float gently, for one, versus a thrilling water slide where you zoom quickly, for one. For instance, in a calm, wide river, the water flows slowly and you could paddle upstream easily, far one. But in a narrow, steep stream, the water rushes fast and you can't paddle against it, far one. This concept helps engineers design safe and efficient waterways and understand natural water flows. In microfluidics, it's less common but still useful in special cases like controlling tiny droplets in small channels. Imagine, for instance, a leaf floating down a stream, gently carried by the water's current. The Froud number helps us understand the forces acting on it, such as gravity and inertia. It tells us whether the flow is tranquil or turbulent, providing insights into the nature of the fluid's movement. This number plays a crucial role in various fields, from ship design to understanding river currents, and even in predicting the behavior of waves. The Froud number is named after William Froud, a 19th century British engineer who was a pioneer in fluid dynamics. Froud made significant contributions to understanding ship resistance and propulsion, revolutionizing naval architecture. His work led to the development of this important dimensionless number, which has since become a cornerstone in fluid mechanics. The Froud number is a powerful tool for engineers and scientists alike, aiding in the design and analysis of various systems involving fluid flow. Today, it continues to be used in modern applications, from environmental engineering to aerospace, showcasing its enduring relevance and versatility. Deciphering the Froud number formula. The Froud number is calculated using a simple yet powerful formula. It is the ratio of inertial forces to gravitational forces within a fluid, providing insight into the fluid's dynamic behavior. The formula is far equals V divided by the square root of GL, where V represents the flow velocity, a crucial factor in fluid dynamics. The symbol G denotes the acceleration due to gravity, a constant that influences how fluids move and interact. The letter L signifies the characteristic length, which could be the depth of the fluid or the length of an object within the flow, both essential for accurate calculations. This seemingly simple equation holds profound implications for understanding fluid behavior, from natural water bodies to engineered systems. It tells us whether the inertia of the fluid or the force of gravity dominates, a key factor in predicting wave patterns and flow regimes. This balance of forces dictates how waves propagate, how objects float, and how fluids mix, impacting everything from ship design to environmental science. Understanding the Froude number is essential for engineers, scientists, and anyone interested in the complexities of fluid mechanics. Inertial and gravitational forces, a delicate balance. Inertial force is the tendency of an object to resist changes in motion. A moving object wants to keep moving, and a stationary object wants to stay put. This resistance to change is inertia. Gravitational force, on the other hand, pulls objects towards each other. On Earth, gravity pulls everything towards the center of the planet. In fluid flow, these two forces are constantly at play. Inertial forces try to keep the fluid moving in a straight line. Gravitational forces try to pull the fluid downwards. The Froude number helps us determine which force is dominant. Section 4, Flow Types, Navigating the Froude Number Spectrum. In fluid mechanics, understanding the Froude number is essential for classifying different types of flow. The Froude number classifies flow into three main types, subcritical, critical, and supercritical. Each type has distinct characteristics and implications for fluid behavior. When the Froude number is less than one, the flow is subcritical. This type of flow is typically found in natural rivers and streams. Gravitational forces dominate, resulting in a smooth and tranquil flow. The water moves gently and the surface remains relatively calm. When the Froude number equals one, the flow is critical. This is a unique and delicate state. This is a transitional state where inertial and gravitational forces are balanced. It represents a threshold between subcritical and supercritical flows. When the Froude number is greater than one, the flow is supercritical. This type of flow is often seen in man-made channels and steep river sections. Inertial forces dominate, leading to rapid and turbulent flow. The water surface is rough and waves and eddies are common. Understanding these flow types is crucial in numerous applications. Engineers and scientists use this knowledge to design and manage water systems effectively.
For example, designing a dam requires careful consideration of the Froude number. The flow characteristics can significantly impact the dam's stability and efficiency. Engineers need to ensure that the flow over the dam's spillway remains subcritical to prevent erosion and damage. Proper management of flow types can enhance the longevity and safety of hydraulic structures. Section 5. Open Channel Flow, where the Froude number reigns. Open channel flow refers to the flow of liquids with a free surface open to the atmosphere. Rivers, canals, and spillways are prime examples. The Froude number is particularly important in understanding open channel flow. It helps us predict how changes in channel geometry will affect flow velocity and depth. For instance, if the Froude number in a channel exceeds one, the flow becomes supercritical. This can lead to the formation of hydraulic jumps. These jumps are characterized by a sudden increase in flow depth and energy dissipation. Understanding the Froude number allows engineers to design channels that efficiently manage water flow and prevent hazards. 